Why should you believe in creation and not evolution? I mean, scientifically speaking. Haven't we proven that evolution is a fact? Well, when most people hear the term evolution, they think of one kind of an animal turning into another kind of an animal. This is biological evolution, and it's just one of several different kinds of evolution. You know, another kind is geological evolution. Now, this is the idea that the Earth is billions of years old, and that the rock layers and other geological features are the result of gradual processes over millions and millions of years. But you see, this is an important foundation to biological evolution, because without millions of years, there's no way that evolution could ever take place. In fact, the geological ages had already been proposed and were used by Darwin to come up with his theories of biological evolution. Now you see, since the 19th century, uniformitarianism has dominated geology. This is the idea that present-day processes and rates are the key to what happened in the past. But you see, scientists are slowly having to let go of this idea because they increasingly realize that catastrophes are a big part of Earth's past. One such catastrophe was called the Lake Missoula Flood. Now, because we begin with different starting points, creationist and evolutionary geologists, they don't agree on the dating of this flood, but both agree that it happened and that it happened relatively recently in the past. Actually, for evolutionary geologists, it took them a long time to accept, despite the overwhelming evidence, because it seemed too biblical to have a catastrophe of such massive proportions. So what was this flood? Well, you see, within a few centuries of the global flood of Noah's day, there was an ice age, which is where cavemen come into the picture. But at the peak of the ice age, approximately 540 cubic miles of water were dammed up in Lake Missoula in Montana. Now that's a long ways from here. But that's three times the volume of Lake Erie. So eventually, the lake burst, rushing 400 feet deep as it carved its way towards the Pacific Ocean not too far from here. The fast-moving water quickly laid down rock layers and it carved out canyons including Grand Coulee, which is a canyon 50 miles long and 900 feet deep. The beautiful channeled scablands are a further testament to how much damage a lot of fast-moving water can do. Now, secular geologists believe that the rock layers are laid down slowly over millions and millions of years and that canyons are carved over time by rivers. But that wasn't the case with much of the geography of the western United States here. It was carved rapidly by a flood of water from a burst glacial lake. And I've talked to PhD evolutionary geologists. Most trained geologists agree that it happened extremely quickly. And it created things just like the beautiful Multnomah Falls that we see right behind us. Now, if the comparatively small flood, such as the Lake Missoula flood, could do so much damage and completely change the landscape, well then imagine what the global flood described in Genesis could do. Well actually, if there was a global flood, then everywhere we look, we would expect to see miles of rock layers filled with billions and billions of fossils. And this is exactly what we find. You see, the evidence points to a flood of biblical proportions, not slow and gradual processes over millions of years. You know, that's just one more scientific reason that you shouldn't believe in evolutionary geology. It takes a lot of faith. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. Like what you're seeing? Want more? Be sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as we put up new videos and content.